I'm Danny and welcome to the June tour of my edible forest garden. I can't believe we're in the middle of the year already. It is the 26th of June so there's only a couple more days left of the month and there is so much going off at the plot in the minute. I've got quite a few things to harvest today so I'm going to take you on a little tour around the garden to show you what's changed since last month and we'll collect a few things from my basket along the way. We're going to start at the front door today because the front entrance to my second plot has had the biggest change over the past few weeks. So let's go outside and we'll start from here. So as we come through, it is a very sunny evening today. Let's just lock this door. So, do you notice anything different? <laughs> Where's all the wild garlic? This is the time of year where it all gets hoed away. All of the leaves died back, as you can see here, and it all gets hoed away and I put my squash here. So I've got bags of squash here and these will just kind of sprawl out and cover this space here. And I'm actually gonna be planting some flowers along here as well, just so it's a little bit prettier and it fills out the space a little bit more until the squash grow. So this is um, a really good use of space, I think, because the wild garlic takes up a lot of room, but I don't wanna get rid of it because I absolutely love it and I use it for so many different things. So this way I can, grow my squash in bags so I don't have to disturb with all of the bulbs underneath every year. So as we come through look at this fever view. It is huge and beautiful. I'm going to harvest some of this today. All in these pots around here are all of my potatoes, really really late planted potatoes. My trees are looking good and I've got a little bed behind my polytunnel here which I recently sowed a few rows of radishes and lettuce as well. Behind here, my broad beans and my potatoes. My broad beans are looking very, very sorry for themselves. And it's my own fault because I didn't stake and tie them in. We had a really, really strong winds and uh, yeah, it blew them all down. So I didn't really uh, stake them back up and they haven't recovered, but they are still shooting out loads and loads of beans. So that's the important thing. They just look a little bit unsightly. The pots by my greenhouse or my polytunnel rather have been swapped out. They were all tulips and now it's a mixture of China asters and dahlias along here. My polytunnel is probably one of the biggest changes as well. So this is now set up with my irrigation system. This is an easy feed irrigation system from Alien Hydroponics and it is absolutely amazing. I have set it so well, I've set all the levels so it floods to the right amount for each of the plants and I can set it on a timer system or I can just do it manually. So this is really great for when I go away and I'm actually going away tomorrow for um, a little birthday trip to the Scottish Highlands. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I've got lots and lots of different varieties of tomatoes in here. Um, and they're all looking really good. They've all decided to catch up. They were a little slow to start off with, but yeah, they've all decided to catch up now and they're looking great. Lots of them are just starting to come into flower. This will be really handy when I go away. It will mean Ryan doesn't have to spend so long watering everything for me. So these beds behind here are more potatoes. These are really late planted again and they're only just starting to pop up now. So I'm hoping to have quite a good crop of potatoes this year because I've dedicated quite a lot of space to them. More broad beans here, same thing happened. I tried to rectify this one and tie them in, but it didn't really make much difference. <laughs> they still look pretty atrocious, bless them. I'm definitely going to go back to my usual method of tying them in from the get. I've got some new bean structures that I've put up. These are mostly violet climbing beans and balotti beans as well. And these are just gonna climb up in between these two little beds here. I've been having quite a few problems with black fly on these, um, but I have noticed quite a few ladybug larvae. So they are taking care of them for me. I've been removing a few of them manually, but other than that, these little guys have been doing the job for me. So this bed behind here, this was all full of cow parsley and hogweed and now it's all been cleared and I'm going to be planting lots of flowers along here. These cages are just the staging for my polytunnel, I've got nowhere to store them so I'm actually just going to plant through here and uh, yeah, hopefully when everything fills out you won't even know they're there. <laughs> 
I've actually recently planted a lilac bush here to provide a little bit more hedging and a couple of hops as well. So I'm looking forward to having some homegrown beer here. And I'll put the hops in between, the fence in between mine and next doors because it'd be nice if we can both pick the hops. <laughs> they seem like the type that might like a nice homebrew beer. So that'll be quite nice. So yeah, it's looking great in this uh, second plot at the minute. Um, apart from, <laughs> look at this huge pile of um, just weeds. This is all of the cow parsley and all of the wild garlic and all of the hogweed that was in both of these beds along here. And if you look just behind it, you'll see that there's a new bed planted up a veg along here as well. So this was all of my spring flowers. Aquilegia's kind of gone over here. And yeah, this is a nice big space back for growing veg now. So I've planted some cabbages and cauliflowers, some beetroot, some kale, a couple of types of kale, some calendula, yarrow, and some balotti beans along here as well. So if I put you on wide angle, you can see how huge this pile is. I actually have just left it here because there's a series of events that need to happen before it gets to my compost bin. My compost is ready in my first bay and it needs shipped into my second, but it needs sieving before that happens. So I need to sieve the compost, move the compost, and then I can finally get this stuff back into the first bay. So yeah, there's a few things that need to happen before before that gets to the back, but it will will happen soon hopefully. So around here this is just the back of my pond and all of my squash and stuff are in here. I'm hoping this crocosmia is all in flower when I get back from Scotland and this pond desperately needs a clean out as well but I'll, again I'll do that when I get back. And inside the first or inside the greenhouse to my second plot there's not too much going on here there's some tomatoes that are in pots, a few cucumbers and some salads and cabbages and bits and pieces at the back, um, loads and loads of horsetail that I'm drying for various different types of things and I've got some turnips and some swedes along there as well. But yeah, it's absolutely beautiful in here. Could do with a bit of a clean these windows though, eh? <laughs> So where shall we go? Let's go to the back of this plot first and then we'll go around. So along here this has also been cleared out. There's a couple of overwintered flowering celeries that I'm just letting flower, quite pretty. And then I've also planted up um, a cheeky curie squash in a little bag here and I'm hoping that's going to climb up and around this little brick barbecue here that I don't use as barbecue, I use it as a herb drying rack usually. But um, at the moment it's just got some pots and bits like that in it. Um, right, look at all of these seedlings, plants that still need planting out. I've actually done so much, even though it looks like there's loads here, there was like three times this. Could have set up my own uh, plant shop, I think. <laughs> but yeah, all of these still need going out, but um, I need to find some spots for these. And just, they're mostly flowers now, so I'm just going to pop them wherever I can find room. In this new bed here, I've got some cosmos, some straw flowers, a random tomato, lots of chamomile, some achillea, um, and some calendula. Did I say calendula? So yeah, this bed is lovely. Um, I'm glad that I finally got it all filled, and it makes a nice little, um, well, nice little windy, extra windy path in the plot. My favourite thing about designing gardens is creating all these little rooms so I love that there's lots of different little windy paths and lots of different routes that you can take throughout the garden. The berberus along here is looking lush. I love how it changes from a deep purple to a red to a green colour. I'm going to be taking some of this elderflower I think. I've still got quite a few little florets here and still quite a few bottles of cordial to make. In this little greenhouse here is just some dwarf beans that really need to come out of there now and go in the ground, so I might do that in a little bit. My little woodland area is looking lovely in the sunshine, apart from this ugly piece of netting, but I have to keep it on here because all of my black currants are starting to ripen and the pigeons have absolutely stripped all of my red currants and my pink currants at the back there. So, um... Yeah, I didn't realise until it was too late, so I haven't got any of those currants at the back. But I have still got some black currants here, and they're not getting these. 
foxgloves behind here look absolutely beautiful. Bees think so too. Loads of foxgloves this year and they've got a massive, I had one that was like seven feet tall, big white one, it's beautiful. Um, I actually need to cut some of the heads down on these because I can get a second flower later in the year if I cut some of the spent heads down. All of the raspberries through this path look great. Look at them, they're all massive. And I've got loads and loads of berries on here. I'm going to net these when I go away again because I think I'm going to have quite a few when I get back. And it would be a shame if they're all gone. Actually, there was one along here that has been taken already. I was going to eat that on my way around when I showed you, but it's already been taken. And there's a couple here, so I'm going to take one before it uh, gets stolen by something else. All of my plums on this tree are coming in nicely. Got quite a few on this, on my other trees. Well, I'll show you when I go around, actually. All the honesty. This needs harvesting. I'm going to pick all some more of these. I've already made a little jar, but I'm going to do another one because they're really, really nice. This little field maple stump here is starting to regrow. Let me zoom out so you can see. Yeah, this little stump's starting to regrow now and I'm going to cut it back because I can just start to see some powdery mildew on here and I don't want that spread into anything else. But um, a little while ago I spied some wine cups underneath here. I can't see at the minute but I'm hoping. We've had a big old rain recently so I'm hoping that the mushrooms start popping up again soon. But yeah, these are the currants that I was on about. They got absolutely stripped by birds. It's such a shame. I absolutely love red currants and white currants. And I've got two huge bushes. And I must just not have noticed for a couple of days, but they've, they've absolutely rinsed them. Um, they've taken them when they've still been green as well. They haven't even given them a chance to ripen, which is really, really annoying. Um, because yeah, like I say, I didn't really have a chance. But yeah, they're all gone. So this is my very wild area. I'm going to try and get through here without getting stung. Um, there is a pond in here, but I keep this area very wild. There are some fruit trees actually around here as well. Um, and yeah, this is mostly all of my currants and a big old gooseberry bush is through here. I think I might show you that from the other side because it's easier to get to. But yeah, this is a uh, quite a big space and uh, in winter it looks very neat actually. But in summer it goes crazy. Look at it. Looks massive. But yeah, it's a haven for wildlife and you will see the fox, resident fox hanging out around here. And yeah, it's just a quite nice little wild area with lots of forageable weeds as well. Right, so that is how the second plot is looking at the minute. My big old elder. I actually didn't take you to the bathtub. I guess you've seen that before, but we'll just go around and have a quick little nosy. I'm sure you the gooseberry bush actually. So, come through here, there's my fire pit. Um, haven't really fired that up in a little while. It's got a cover on it. Um, but yeah, this is my bathtub. I have fired this up. I had a bath um, a couple of weeks ago and it was so so lovely it's really nice to be having outdoor baths again and um, i just planted some sweet peas that i found <laughs> that were really dried out um i'm hoping they recover i've just planted them at the back of the here hoping that they'll climb up um my little flower bed behind here is got some bits in it some evening primrose some dahlias some foxgloves um, lots of lemon balm and i actually put up this really crooked old archway because oh well, i was going to throw it away but then i thought i'll just put it up here i've got a couple of um what they called clematis to go somewhere so i thought it'd be quite nice to have that just kind of a little flowery archway over my bathtub but yeah let's have a little look through here this is another patch this is my fireweed i use this as a screening for my bathtub it's really effective look if i come over here like it the the fire reed hides my bathtub completely and so if I come round here you can see it it's kind of cool I really love fire reed it's edible as well you can make um, tea with it you can decorate your salads and your plates with your little flowers so in here I just planted some medicinal flowers got some calendula some yarrow and this is also where lots of my 
currants and berries are as well. Like I say, no currants, but I have got lots of raspberries that need covering. Really nice to have some berries because, like I say, the pigeons stripped my currants and the rats and squirrels took every single strawberry. <laughs> but in here, look, look at my gooseberries. I've got loads and loads of gooseberries coming through. These all need netting, really. Um, I have got some bramble and some cleavers running through here, which I think is doing a great job, actually, of deterring the birds. Right, yeah, through here is a couple of fruit trees. Very young ones, so I'm not expecting fruit off of these. Uh, yeah, it's looking great, I think. Very wild, very lovely. But yeah, let's go back through to my first plot. So we'll be coming up through the back of it by my skate ramp. I've got a little patch of Jack by the Head and Foxglove round here. Wisteria. This is the wisteria that I'm growing for my future house. <laughs> I've always wanted a house with the wisteria growing up it. So I've actually um, bought one and I'm just growing it for that day when I do move into my forever home. Alright, so behind here is my skate ramp that I can't remember when I painted this and I can't remember if you saw it in my last video or not, but it is very nice and green now. Matches the rest of the plot, blends in a little better. And my little hammock behind it, Clematis, is climbing all up this back fence here, which is lovely. I can't wait for this to all fill out. And along these beds, I should probably plant them up with something a bit nicer, but <sighs> I've left all the thistles in here for the goldfinch because they used to have so many thistles in next door's pot here when it was empty for years. And there was loads of it, big hedge of thistles. There was so many goldfinch. Um, but yeah, we didn't get any goldfinch last year because of the new plot. So I'm growing the thistles for them here. <laughs> Even though it doesn't maybe look very pretty, soon I'm going to have some goldfinch to watch and it's going to be lovely. So I'm going to forego some flowers for some thistles, which thistles are very pretty as well. But yeah, I have actually put some flowers in here. So there'll be some chamomile growing through here and some cosmos as well. Um, I planted a fairly new rose and a new honeysuckle that's climbing up nicely. So we come through to my kitchen area and my pizza ovens, my little desk. I've been cooking in here quite a lot lately, so I've got quite a few bits out already. I saw earlier a squirrel trying to get into this. I heard a little bit of a racket and I was like, I came up to the back and I saw him trying to prise it open. They're so clever, those little things. I have to hide it in my pizza oven a lot of the time because I can't get in there. So this is a skate ramp in my kitchen area. And my honeysuckle is growing amazingly. Look at it, it's huge. And this was just a little cutting a few years ago that I popped down there. And it has spread all up this fence, all along my kitchen and around here. So I'm hoping it will carry on spreading around and reach up and go along my fence as well. And I just have one huge, huge honeysuckle it smells absolutely incredible it's all in flower now it smells beautiful honeysuckle is medicinal and it's edible and it's really really lovely it smells beautiful like peaches so we've got here some more overwintered celery that again i'm letting flower for the bees and i've got some lupins these are actually all starting to go over now and i need to cut these back because i've been getting quite a few repeat flushes off of these every time i cut them back i get some new stems up um, but this one i haven't been cutting and it's stopped so i'm going to give it all um, a good dead head and see if i get any more flowers later on this is one this bed is um, atrocious isn't it it's just proper dried out it was all my onions my onions never do great i always get leaf miner but i always give it go anyway um, but yeah, they're all, uh, they look pretty dead, don't they? But yeah, this is one of my favourite poppies. Comes back every year. It's absolutely beautiful. So squishy. So lovely. This area here is uh, a big old flower bed just next to my skate ramp. 
I love it, it's so pretty, but um, I've been a bit slack on the deadheading. Well, actually I haven't, I've been deadheading loads. It just takes so much time to deadhead all of these flowers. So um, I haven't done this one in a, in a few days and it's starting to go to seed and the flowers are stopping producing. So I really, really need to get my little snips out and get deadheading. <laughs> little ladybird larvae doing his job eating the aphids. So these fruit trees in my little orchard here, last year I got a huge, huge harvest off them and they seem to produce in abundance every other year. So this year it's very few fruits in the trees. I haven't got nearly as many fruits on these branches as what I did last year and it seems to be a little bit of a pattern that they fruit in abundance every other year and I think you can manage that by pruning and taken some of the fruits off the branches but really I just kind of let them do what they want. Um, I do give them a light prune but I, I don't really generally take many of the fruits off of the branches um, or off of the bunches rather. I just kind of let them do their thing. So with my cherries though um, it's quite unusual for me to not get any cherries this year and I'm not sure whether it was the drought or whether the buds stripped them all but I find that quite um, I find it quite unlikely that the birds took every single cherry. Um, I've got a feeling that it had something to do with the weather, um, but I'm not quite sure, but there's not really any cherries at all on this. I actually just found one single cherry just right here, <laughs> but that is the only one. So yeah, I'm a bit flummoxed as to why this one's not fruited. So through my fruit trees, I've got a huge patch of raspberries. These are supposed to be autumn fruit and raspberries, but again, they kind of do what they want and they fruit um, most of the year generally. So I've got quite a few berries on here that I need to harvest today. Um, I've got a little goji shrub through here that hasn't flowered this year. I'm not sure whether it's getting enough light to be honest. So I need to have a little look into proper goji shrub care and find out what I'm doing wrong there. So all of the guilds are looking good. I've had loads of rhubarb off this little guild under here and lots and lots of chives as well. I'm going to clear back some of this red campion because it has really started to take over now. Um, I cleared it all from around my pond, I'll show you that just in a second. But these along here were strawberries, but um, Mr Squirrel has been having a field day and taking them all. I've been taking them once they're green, so as soon as they're green it's just been <laughs> ripping them straight off. The sun's just gone in, but as we come through to the main kind of veggie patch area, this big old bed here is now full of squash and some patty pants, and then my big barrels of raspberries are all fruiting nicely now as well. I've got a couple of big tubs there, and I've been putting this netting over it just so the birds don't take them all away. Don't mind sharing some, but I do like to have a few. <laughs> This here, look at this. This just looks like a big old patch of plants, but it's actually my herb spiral. My spiral is hidden in here somewhere. You can see the bricks poking out here, but it is absolutely producing right now. It's a little pond down here as well. But yeah, it looks great. The echinops growing, the lovage is all coming into flower, as is the lavender, the fennel, all of the wormwood gotten huge now and yeah it's all looking really lovely in here the sorrel has taken over this whole pathway lots of the herbs I've got here are going to be dried and I'm going to be using these for various things for my retreats um, lots of the menus some of the workshops that we'll be doing some of the herbal workshops um, and also for herbal teas and things like that and just behind it got another little flower bed here some hollyhock just starting to come through some dahlias starting to come through um, I've got lots of sea holly and this Melton Mowbray pastels as well that's actually starting to get a little bit of powdery mildew so I don't know whether that's going to stay I might have to think about that Crocosmia is getting massive it's not flowering yet but it's going to be beautiful when it does and yeah it's looking really nice this is the orchard, let me zoom out. So you're just behind the herb spiral is the orchard. And I've got a huge old bed here that I haven't had enough compost. I haven't made enough compost to be able to fill this one. So at the moment it's just for the crap, pallets, 
compost bags and behind it is my huge huge comfrey patch I use comfrey for my fertilizer and as mulch as well I've got a bed here that's just got stray garlic in it and I haven't planted anything else in it but I've got lots of flowers that need a home so that might be a good little patch for them and in here <laughs> It's already been munched, but in here I've got some newly planted kale and in this bed some kale as well. Um, back into my skate ramp. But yeah, along this pathway is my brassica bed and some strawberries as well. So these are the few strawberry plants that have actually done well. These are quite old plants, these ones. Um, my new bed, I'll get to that in a second. That was just runners and it's not done well at all so the droughts really hampered my strawberries this year but there are a couple little rogue plants in here which i'm quite happy about those are full of seedlings but yeah this bed along here is mostly brassicas lots of cauliflower lots of cabbages lots of kale and it just runs all the way along this is my big old hawthorn tree little owl box up there that is in use and I recently planted rhododendron here, some wallflowers, and my lovely rose. This smells absolutely beautiful, and it's doing really well. It's climbing all the way up this little trellis here, and then once it gets long enough, I'm going to tie it into that back fence there. See if I can get it to trail along it a little bit. But here is also a big crabapple tree with a honeysuckle growing through it and more cabbages down here so many cabbages and then oh i've missed out a whole bed here here are my outdoor tomatoes so i've got lots of tomatoes in my greenhouse in my polytunnel but i've also got a few outside as well um, these are just in these little makeshift cages um found this one these two but then i made these ones out of just some random wire that i had and then there's some poppies and some more overwintered celery in this bed as well. So I'm going to be planting lots of maybe beetroot and turnips and swede and stuff in the little gaps here. There are some courgettes down here as well. So the courgettes will take up a little bit of room down there. And then this bed, at the moment I've got some forget-me-nots that I'm going to get rid of. Some stray poppies, some garlic that probably needs pulling up now. Lots of potatoes that are just starting to flower and I've also got some garlic or some scapes that are just coming into flower as well. Harvest these, these are absolutely delicious. And just behind my potatoes are all of my parsnips. Look at the size of them now. They're about seven foot tall and the pollinators are absolutely loving them. There are little flying bugs around these 24 seven and it's a lovely sight to see really sad when they've stopped flowering and I'm going to have to pull them up but I'm going to need the space of the bed back soon. So all of my cabbages are doing really well. I've harvested loads of cabbages from last season and these are all of my massive ones that I'm just going to give a little while longer. And then under here I've got all of my baby cabbages and baby kale and all the bits that I've planted recently. Um, and then here's my salad bed. So I did make a video of when I was planting this out and yeah, it's all filled out really, really nicely now. All the lettuces are pretty much ready to harvest. I'm going to let these ones bulk into heads and then these ones I've been using as cut and come again lettuces. But yeah, really, really nice. Then in here I've got a few more salads as well. The shallots are kind of looking a little bit worse for wear. <laughs> I'm hoping that they ping back, but we'll see. Lots of bindweed up Fred's side there, some apple trees. Um, this apple tree is in Fred's side, but I get loads of apples here, so that's really, really nice. And then down here, I've got all of my raspberries and some potatoes as well in this little sub pod here, which is actually my worm farm. So I've got a little worm bin back here. And then loads of trimmings. This is where I chuck all my spiky trimmings. <laughs> ones that I don't want in my compost bin and ones that I don't want to run through my chipper um, so they're all just here that is a compost bin for the spiky stuff as well and then along here is all of my lemon balm I've got a huge huge 
patch of lemon barb and this smells amazing. It's got some horsetown cutie pass running through there. I've got a couple of plants of Rebecca which I absolutely love, such cheerful little plants and uh, they'll be flowering soon. I've got another stray squash in a in a bag there. Along here, I'm kind of sad, it's a little bit bare now. This used to be a big pathway full of wallflowers, but the wallflowers did not survive the winter. So now all the spring bulbs have died back along here. It's looking very sad. So I think I might plant up maybe some dahlias or something along this little pathway here just to make it a little bit more summery and cheerful again. It's too hot inside to be potting up anymore. So I dragged my potting table outside and this I got from Fred next door um, last month. It's really, really cool. He, uh, he said it comes in two parts and you put that side on top of this side. Um, and then it makes some tall kind of little like shelving unit. And down here, <laughs> look how sorry these plants look. I just planted up a very sick and dying rhododendron that I let sit in a pot for far too long. It was very, very pot bound. And the hot weather didn't help either. Um, so I popped it in the ground just to give it a last little bout of life because there is still a bit of green on that stem. So I'm hoping that I can give it a little bit of a chance here. Um, again with this dahlia, same thing. I just banged it in the pot because I thought it was better than it sitting and drying out. <laughs> but then we come round to my mum's bed and look how gorgeous this looks. It's all in flower now and it is massive. Loads of St John's wort loads of little daisy asters, loads of alliums and lupins. The lupins are all dying back now but I need to give them a good dead head so they can reflower. But the echinox is just starting to come out and yeah it's just looking really really lovely back here. I need to get rid of some of this oxide daisy because it's taken over but other than that it looks very very pretty down here. I always love this border, it's my favourite little patch. Is that my salvia coming back? I thought my salvia died, but I think that might be it coming back there. So this is a sad looking strawberry bed and you might remember me planting this up. I was very late planting this up and then I got sick and it took even longer and these were all runners from plants. So, so I wasn't expecting a very good crop from these anyway, but the drought really didn't help and I've barely got any foliage on these plants. Look at how puny and weak they look. So the fruits are very very small but I haven't really gotten very many off of this at all. Um, a couple of berries at most and the ones that I have got the uh, squirrels have usually taken so that's why I've got these little plastic cloches at the moment protecting what very little berries I do have down here. Just stepped on this one, sick. So this is quite interesting you can see that the three plants along this side are all much bigger and much more lush than the other ones here and I've got a feeling that might be because of the companion plant of co um, borage that I've put next to this. Strawberries and borage absolutely love each other and it's said that it helps with yield and also with taste as well and I do often notice that my strawberry plants next to my borage do grow a lot more lush than the ones that don't. So I'm going to be planting a lot more borage around my strawberries from now on. Um, and my pond, this little pond is, you can actually see it now a little bit. It was completely overgrown before, but um, we gave it a little bit of a weed. We got some of the flag iris out of it. And also I've removed all of that red camp, well, most of the red campion that was behind. It absolutely took over this whole patch here. You couldn't even see that I had a rhubarb patch down there. Um, but yeah, now this is all just squash and rhubarb and yeah, lots more space for other plants to kind of grow. I still need to get rid of some of this hogweed and also some more of that geranium as well because it grows absolutely everywhere. But once that's removed, some of the other plants can start coming back. I've got some hostas that rarely see the light of day, so it'd be quite nice for those to have a little bit more light and breathing room. Look how big these teasels have gotten now. These are about, I'd say, eight or nine foot. That huge, absolutely huge. And they've not come into flower yet, but they have got flower buds. So once these do start coming into flower, they've got pretty little blue, blue flowers. The bees love them. And you'll see the bees all around here. 
The teasels are actually really interesting because they're a kind of a carnivorous plant. They gather water inside their little um, buckets that they've got here and little insects go inside and drown and then they sort of auto-digest them and use them for a little bit of food. It's quite interesting plant teasels and I love to grow these. I've got quite a few on my plot, some around my bathtub, lots around my pond and I just grow them just one because they're very impressive. Look at them. <laughs> and two, the bees and stuff love them. So yeah, really interesting plants teasels. It's um, looking a little bit less wild around the pond but um, some might say it's still pretty wild. <laughs> Got some little lettuces there that need to get planted out. And that brings us to the end of the first plot. So last little check out is the greenhouse. See this big old grapevine that's growing all along the top. That is coming out from the inside of here. Let's go in. It's a mess, excuse the mess on the floor, but all of my tomatoes in here are all planted out now. So these are all looking really good. Lots of them have come into flower already. Um, but yeah, there's not much else going on. There's lots of more cabbages and brassicas on the floor, some beetroot, some leeks, some bits and bobs that need to go out. I think there's some more squash there. Gosh, I didn't realise I had those. Um, and then in here, keeping extra warm in a double greenhouse, are my sweet potatoes so i've got six sweet potato plants that i'm looking after in this little polytunnel inside a greenhouse and um, just to give them that extra little bit of warmth because this greenhouse has got loads of broken windows so it's not actually the warmest um but yeah it's all looking all right at the moment so this is how the allotment's looking at the end of june i think it's looking fairly lovely still got quite a bit to go in the ground but everything's starting to come into its own now. 